الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد uh, Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Today is 29th of the month of Ramadan Friday uh, uh, We are studying some of the adequate manners of the Eid and uh, we spoke about the timing of the Salat al-Eid and uh, 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 the ruling of the Salat al-Eid. Uh, was there any prayer before or after of the Salat al-Eid? Uh, where should we pray the Salat al-Eid? Uh, uh, what to do before you go uh, uh, for the Musalla, for the Salah? Uh, in some others, adequate, we spoke about that yesterday. Uh, sorry, Wednesday. Today, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we'll take some others and we will speak about the prayer as well if we had the time, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Point number 11 in this, uh, uh, from the book of the Shaykh, Jazahullahu uh, Khairan, Hafizahullah, that uh, uh, it is mustahab, it is uh, recommended to wear a new dress on the day of the Eid. Or if there is no new dress, whatever the dress is uh, clean and uh, uh, nice, the best what you have, you wear that one on the day of the Eid. As for Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he said, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, he went to the market and he bought a, 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 a jubba uh, uh, for the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the market. And then he brought it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, take this one so you can beautify yourself for it for the day of the Eid and for the delegations when they come. So it is a sunnah, it is a recommended to wear on the day of the Eid uh, uh, good clothes. It is recommended to wear uh, best of the clothes that you have and it's recommended to put the uh, perfume and beautify yourself. All these things that you do for yourself or any other things, uh, if you do that for a wedding party or any other things, it uh, uh, has more rights to be done on the day of the Eid. It's more, it has more rights to beautify yourself, to put a perfume, to, to take care of yourself and to come out clean and nice uh, uh, on the day of the Eid. So this is recommended on the day of the Eid uh, because this shows what you do, this, this beautifying that you do and putting uh, new clothes and uh, putting the perfume and all these things that you do, this is that you show uh, that the, the thank you are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, uh, you get the reward on that. And some other days, some other time that you do for yourself, it is just, uh, just you do it for yourself. But in this day, uh, when you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for that because you do this as uh, it's recommended from the uh, Sahaba and from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also, you do that to show the thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ibadah that you have completed, which is the month of Ramadan. When, but as for the rulings and the adequates of the Eid, as uh, when it, uh, the minute the Imam is finished the Salah and the khutbah was over, then after that, it is the ruling and every other things are finished. There is nothing else after that. Uh, as for the Salat al-Eid, I will leave it to the end, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Uh, 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 we'll speak about that because we are in a situation that what should we do? But over and overall, we'll speak about the salah first, and then in our case, we'll speak about that as well. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. From the Sunnah is also from the recommendation, not the obligation. Uh, that uh, the the woman, the woman should go out to the musalla for the salah as well, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded the woman, even if they were in the, their monthly period, and those young girls, he commanded, he told them to go out for the salat al-Eid, just to witness that greatness, to witness the khair uh, that was happening in the salat al-Eid. So as the uh, there is athar a narration from Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum. Uh, that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, حَقٌ عَلَى كُلِّ ذَاتِ نِطَاقٍ الْخُرُوجُ إِلَى الْعِدَيْنِ Every single woman, it is their rights to go for the Salat al-Eid, for the, for the Salat al-Eid, for the two Eid Salah, it's their rights to go out and to go for the Salat. Uh, uh, 
and here uh, 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 it's, it's the haq, the rights, it means it's a recommendation. It's not that it is uh, compulsory uh, 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 that they have to go to the musalla. Uh, but when the sister goes for the salah, there is special uh, recommendation for the sisters that they have to be very careful uh, for the clothing that they are wearing, for the hijab and not to put the perfume and uh, the, all these things, uh, especially subhanallah, it is, it's very, very uh, nowadays it's uh, difficult. Uh, so even the, the type of the hijabs, the type of the clothing that the sister, the Muslim sister, you see them wearing and they coming out for the Eid Salah or anything, the makeup that they put, all these things and the perfume that they put, all these things are haram. It is a haram upon the sister when she goes out of her house to put the perfume. Uh, and uh, there is a very, very strong warning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for those women. So with those women that they put the perfume and then they go out, whoever smells from the male, non-mahram people, they smell that perfume as if this woman is uh, 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 committing an adultery, a zina. So it is a very strict and a very strong warning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for the sisters, uh, it is a very, very, uh, they, it's, they can go, they, it's not, uh, nobody can stop them, but they have to keep in mind that what are the, uh, what, how they should go out, the way that they should go out, what they should wear, and what they, all these things are very important. Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was one of those young girls that told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Ya Rasulullah, one of the women told him when he uh, uh, commanded him to go out for the salah, they told him that we don't have a proper hijab. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told her to get in with the hijab, in the, with your sister in her hijab. So the clothing of one woman at that time, the clothing that the sister that was wide, it was big, that that, uh, that it was enough for two people. And still you will not understand that the, the two people are wearing that. But subhanAllah, today, uh, 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 the sister, the way that they wear the clothes, it's up to inch and milli and santi, so it does not fit anybody else. And that's that much, uh, that, 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 that way that they are wearing the clothing, which is totally unacceptable. It is not allowed in Islam to dress like that. And then you go out in front of the people, non mahrams, the people that they are not your mahram, and then you go out, and then you, you especially you want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's unacceptable. This is not allowed, and this is not totally, it's not, uh, it is, it is, uh, uh, and the sisters that they are in the monthly period, they can go as well to the musalla for the Eid, uh, but they don't pray. Uh, they can listen to the khutbah and they can make zikr uh, on that day. It is uh, uh, okay for them and not, uh, uh, nothing is, uh, and this is uh, uh, okay with, with the sisters. Uh, the khutbah of the Eid khutbah, uh, is uh, uh, with the, the, the authentic opinions uh, and the qual uh, of the scholars, the ulama, uh, that, they, uh, that it, is, it is one khutbah, not like Jum'ah, two khutbahs. It is one khutbah to be given, uh, 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 not like the, uh, different than the Friday khutbah, like that they are two khutbah. You sit in one and then you stand up and you continue finish the rest. So, uh, but in the Eid, it is one khutbah. It's one khutbah, one time. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu uh, uh, reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came on the day of Eid al-Fitr or, or an, an adha to the musalla. The first thing that he started with that, it was the prayer. Then uh, he will go uh, uh, face the people and the people are sitting in their lines uh, and he will advise them and he will uh, give them a nasiha and he will command them by doing a good and forbidding the, the evil. Uh, and if he wants to send some delegation somewhere, some people, he will do that. Or if he wants to command, command anything to the people, he will do that. And then he will leave. Uh, uh, and then uh, it means he will give one khutbah. So he will not sit and then he will stand up and start that. Or no, he will that the one khutbah and he will say all these things in it. And then he will leave. He will finish the salah. He will finish the khutbah. But Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, the people were still upon this opinion. They were they used to do like this until the time of the Bani Umayyah. The Umayyah's uh, Khilafa until that time. When uh, he says, when the, uh, when Marwan uh, Ibn Abdul Malik, he was the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Amir of the Medina in the time of the Amawi Khilafa in the Amawi Caliphates. So he was the leader of the Medina, the Amir of Medina. So uh, he said, Abu Sa'id al Khudri says, he witnessed that prayer over there and he came with the Amir uh, for the Salam. Uh, 
uh, and he saw that uh, when he when we came to the musalla, uh, we saw that there were um, there was a member made for him. So there is no member also to be made for the Juma for the Eid Salah. There should be no member. Just the Imam can stand up anywhere and he can give the khutbah. Uh, there was a member made for the Amir, and then Marwan wanted to go up uh, before the Salah. So so he said, I pulled him from his clothes. I told him, what are you doing? So he said, he, he pulled me as well, and he uh, uh, so he gave the khutbah. So then I told him, uh, did you change? You changed what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Uh, uh, Wallahi, he, Abu Sa'i told him, this is what I don't know anything about this, what you did. So he did the khutbah before the Eid, and he did two, uh, one. Uh, so uh, Abu Sa'i told him, uh, 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 this Marwan told uh, Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, what you know, it's went, it's passed, expired, it's not working anymore. Uh, so Abu Sa'id al Khudri told Amir, but by Allah, what I know that is best, better, and much, much better than what you, uh, what you, what you, uh, what you know. So the, 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 the reason that uh, uh, Marwan gave to Abu Sa'id that why he is doing like that, why he did the khutbah before the salah as well, he said that the people uh, were not sitting for us after the khut salah for the khutbah. So after the salah, people were not sitting to listen to our khutbah. So what I did, I made the, I, I made the, I brought the khutbah ahead of the time. So I did one khutbah before, and then I will, uh, 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 the, that's why I did. And there, then Abu Sa'id says, because they used to speak some, uh, uh, some, they used to say some things about the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's people, they were not listening to them. So they did the khutbah before the salah. So in that case, people had no choice. They have to sit down and then they, they, they 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 uh, uh, they used to they uh, used to do the khutbah like that. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says that I witnessed the Salat al-Fitr of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, all of them, they used to pray before the khutbah and then they will give a khutbah. Uh, Jabir ibn Samura radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give a khutbah sta uh, uh, standing and then he will sit, uh, then he will stand up and he will give a khutbah. Uh, then uh, the, this narration is uh, weak in the Sahih Muslim. But فَمَنْ نَبَّأَكَ أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَخْتُبُ جَارِسًا فَقَدْ كَذِبْ Whoever told you, he says, whoever gave you uh, this is about the khutbah is sitting or standing. So the khutbah has to be standing. And uh, Jabir radiallahu anhu says, if anybody gives you a news and tells you that it's allowed to give a khutbah while you are standing, as you see today's happening before the Salat al-Jum'ah, uh, 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 they, their speech before the khutbah as well, they said the Imam comes and he sits on the member and he speaks, but they call it, this is something, a speech. But this is exactly like the khutbah. So whoever tells you that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to give a khutbah sitting, faqad he lied and wallahi Jabir radiallahu anhu says why Allah I prayed with more than 2,000 uh, uh, more than 2,000 salah I offered with the Prophet salah. it means the salah that he used to give a khutbah in it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not give the khutbah sitting and all the khutbah was standing uh, just only in the Salat al-Istisqa, in Juma, in this khutbah, the member, the, pl the platform where the Imam stands, it can be brought in and he can stand on that. But for the Salat al-Eid, there is no need for that even. The Imam can stand like that and he can give a khutbah and it is one khutbah, as I said, and uh, uh, using the member and the two khutbah, all these, the uh, scholars say it's bid'ah, it's innovation. And the Salat al-Eid is, there is no iqama, there is no adhan for the Salat al-Eid. And there is no any other words to be used for the collecting the people, gathering the people, or telling the people stand up for the Salat, qum ila salatikum, or this or that. None of these kind of wording has been mentioned in the Salat al-Eid. Uh, 
Jabir, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu says, I witnessed the Salah uh, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the Salat al-Eid. Uh, so he started with the Salah before the Khutbah without the Adhan in the Iqamah. So there is no Adhan in the Iqamah. And as for the shaking the hands and congratulating the Eid after the Salah, uh, there is nothing been but uh, in the, in the, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so, that uh, there is no doubt that uh, they used to congratulate the Eid to each other. But exactly in this time, if the, this is mostly most likely it's a traditional and that's why you see it uh, in from one country to the other country it's different some people they only shake a hand some people they give a hug some people they do one type and the other type and uh, so that is mostly traditions it is not uh, sunnah but there is uh, there is no uh, 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 you cannot say it's not allowed as well uh, because there, it's, there is no anything uh, wrong happens in that but one more point uh, before I go to mention the Salah, uh, uh, that um, some people on the day of the Eid, once they finish the Salat al-Eid, they go to the graveyard to visit their, the, uh, their loved one that they lost, uh, their family members, the father, the mother, or the wife, or the or a son, or a daughter, uh, a year before, or a few years before that they passed away. So what they do on the day of the Eid, they go to visit their graves. This is totally wrong. It is not allowed. Uh, this is not established from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Going to the graveyard is from the Sunnah, but to do it particularly on this day after the Salat al-Eid, there is nothing from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that. So it is not allowed to do so. It is allowed for the kids to play in that day and, uh, uh, and if a uh, masjid or organization or uh, in the country there is, they, they prepare any kind of games or anything uh, playing for the kids. There is nothing wrong with that. It is uh, uh, happened on the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the people from Abyssinia, the Abyssinia, the Habashis people, they were playing in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, there were two, uh, and the young girls, when they, if they get together and they want, they are singing anything between themselves, uh, uh, it is also not, uh, it is also okay only if they are between themselves and they do it by themselves and they are not musical instruments used for that. So anything of those are not used, just if they want to do, to get happy and they do things like that, there is nothing wrong with that. As there was two young girls came to the Aisha radiallahu anha and they were singing with Aisha radiallahu anha a hadith in Sahihain. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came uh, in the days of the Mina. Uh, so this is Eid al-Adha. And they were uh, singing and they were playing with the duff. So uh, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, anhu uh, uh, didn't like that. He got uh, upset. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, Da'ahuma, leave them ya Abu Bakr, be, uh, as, because it is uh, uh, our Eid day. So it is, uh, uh, but this does not give us uh, uh, allowance, uh, permission to listen to the music or to turn on the music in the car or in the home or on the phone. No, no, the, this singing is done by the, those young girls by themselves uh, with the duff also. And also the wording that they are saying, it should be a proper word wording and it is not used any kind of musical instrument with that and it should not be done as a group that they celebrate they do it in front of the people that they do it for entertainment of the people no if they do it between themselves to get happy as a playing for them that's okay but it is not an allowance or i'm not uh, i want the brothers and the sisters to understand this is not that i'm giving an allowance or i'm saying that the music is uh, listening to music or singing is no it is totally wrong that is haram the music is totally haram this is just only the youngers they do that to get happy between themselves it is not a show to be done by a masjid by a center uh, uh, for the people on the night of the eight they get together or on the eight day so they bring this group of the girl they are trained uh, a week before or something like that and then they comes and they do that uh, then dancings or this kind of uh, singing in front of the people for entertainment no this is between themselves they are in the house the cousins the sisters they got together so if they wanted to do something like that for them it is allowed uh, 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said to Abu Bakr, Da'ahuma ya Abu Bakr, fa innaha ayyamu eidin, wa tilka al-ayyamu ayyamu mina. Ya Abu Bakr, inna likulli qawmin eidin, wa hadha eidin, oh Abu Bakr, this is if every nation has a eid, every nation has a day to celebrate, this is our day of celebration, this is our eid day, let them let them do that for themselves. But as I said again, I'm mentioning this again, this was not done for entertainment of other people. This was done between themselves, for themselves, and there was no musical instrument except the duff was used. So nothing else should be used. Nothing, uh, uh, it is not uh, a music. The music with the musical instruments, it's haram, and the Eid, and after the Eid, before the Eid, all this time. And I said that yeah, in Wednesday lecture, that unfortunately some Muslim communities, they celebrate the Eid with the having a concerts after the Eid and they the, the posters and all these things, the flyers when they come, uh, let's celebrate the Eid with the, this and this musician when, uh, with this night and uh, you know what happens in all these things, the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that happens in all those uh, nights in the concerts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what happens. So that is totally haram, it is not allowed and that will bring the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and we are already have uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, angry upon us and he send this calamity upon us we need to worship Allah and repent to Allah return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away this calamity from us not to disobey him again and again so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the punishment greater and bigger than uh, what we are in And uh, the other ruling that the Sheikh mentioned here also, when if the Eid uh, and the Jum'ah came together, what will happen? So uh, 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 it is on, if the Salat and the uh, Eid came on the Jum'ah day, uh, so the Salat al Jum'ah is not there. So the people when they pray the Salat al Eid, uh, it is okay for them not to come for the Salat al Jum'ah, but it is recommended for the Imam to come to the Masjid. If the people came, he has to lead the Salat al Jum'ah. Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to. Uh, uh, this is about the recitation of the Salat al-Eid. Uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِذَا اجْتَمَعَ الْعِيدُ وَالْجُمْعَةُ فِي يَوْمٍ وَاحِدُ يُقْرَأُ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, his time, uh, uh, there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Abu Dawood from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, it's authentic hadith, uh, that it happened on the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, the Jum'a day and the, it was the Eid day as well, both came on the same day, the Eid came on the day of the Jum'a, on Friday. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said قَدْ اجْتَمَعَ فِي يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا عِيدَيْنِ In this day there is two Eid got together. So the Eid, uh, 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 the Eid and the Jum'ah, which is also another Eid. فَمَنْ شَاءَ أَجْزَأَهُ مِنَ الْجُمْعَةِ So if somebody wants not to come not to attend the Salat al-Jum'ah, it is sufficient for him the Salat al-Eid. وَإِنَّ مُجَمِّعُونَ As for we are going to pray the Salat al-Jum'ah as well. So if somebody is not coming for the Salat al-Jum'ah, it is okay for them, but uh, the Imam uh, supposed to come to the Masjid, it's recommended that he comes to the Masjid, so if some uh, people came, he can lead the Salat al-Jum'ah. Now the question is, some, there is a narration, there is a, an opinion, some people say that the Salat al-Zuhr is also no. Salat al-Zuhr, you have to pray Salat al-Zuhr in the house. It does not, that's a totally different salah, that's a different thing. This here we are saying the, the, the congregation for the Salat al Jum'ah because the people got together already for the Salat al Eid, so it will be very difficult for them to get together back again. Because what happened used to happen on that time, the Jum'ah used to be played, prayed in a certain place, so the people used to come from far away. So if they go back from the Eid and then they want to come back, the whole day will be gone in that, so it was not uh, that was not uh, in the uh, for the good right for the people to uh, to to that, to do so uh, the salat al zuhr has to be prayed it is not that that opinion is not correct the sheikh is mentioning here uh, uh, if any masjid uh, also uh, they say that there is no juma but they want to pray the salat al zuhr congregation jama'a they can do that as well and the person can go and attend the salat al zuhr jama'a in the masjid but the salat al zuhr does not go it is uh, an obligation it has to be prayed the salat al jum'a now coming to the uh, to our uh, to the Salat al Eid, how to pray Salat al Eid and what to be done in the Salat al Eid. Uh, uh, I want the brothers and the sisters to listen very carefully uh, uh, because we are in a situation that in point number one, there will be no Salat al Eid in the Masajid. 
uh, the calamity that uh, we have, uh, the, the, the quarantine and the ruling, the rulers of the, society, the country that we are in, and also in all the Muslim countries, the ruler, they, they, uh, uh, this is uh, because of the, uh, uh, because of the uh, COVID-19 and because of the, uh, this virus. So there is uh, 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 no uh, going outside. There is no gatherings except uh, uh, for, for any in some of the countries they allowed for the Salat al-Eid, but that also with the having the rule of social distances. In the land that we are living, uh, there is no uh, except uh, five people from one family. They can get together. Other than that, it is not uh, recommended to get together because of the spread of the uh, virus. So having said that, so there will be no the Salah. And the, and the, there will be no salah in the masajid or in any other places, congregational salah of the Eid. That's number one. But before that, what is the ruling of the salat al-Eid? Is it recommended? Is it what? Uh, there is three opinions. Opinion number one, this is it's sunnah. It is a sunnah. Uh, number one, say fardu kifaya. Uh, fardu kifaya is, what is the difference between the fardu ayn and the fardu kifaya? If some people, like the salat al-janazah, if some people do the janazah, uh, the obligation is uh, taken from the others as well. So uh, they don't, it's not must upon everyone. Uh, like for the ayn is must upon everyone, but for the kifaya, if some people does that, the rest, it's the obligation is gone from the rest as well. So, and the third opinion is it's for the ayn, and that is the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, and Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Imam ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, and some other great scholars of our era as well, uh, like Shaykh Uthameen and Shaykh ibn Baz, rahimahullah, jami'an. So, uh, the Salat al Eid is wajib, must. It's far uh, obligation upon each and every uh, going to taking that this opinion. Uh, we take that opinion as well. So uh, uh, it's for the ayn upon each person. So it means it must be prayed. You cannot leave the salat al-aid. So you have to pray. So in this case now to we have to pray it. Uh, we cannot pray in the masajid. What we're gonna do and how we're gonna pray that. Uh, Salat al-Eid can be prayed in the jama'ah in congregation if it is possible. If not, you can pray it alone by yourself, uh, two rak'ah, uh, if you are praying it by yourself without the khutbah. If you are praying it alone at home, uh, this is uh, the case if somebody went to the, uh, came late for the salah, he couldn't uh, got the Salat al-Eid. The imam, he just arrived and the imam said, uh, salam. So he didn't cut, he didn't cut the, uh, cut the prayer. He didn't catch up the prayers. So in this case, what he should do, he goes home and he pray at home uh, as the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, uh, the Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, the narration from him, that anytime the Salat al-Eid will, was uh, gone from him, he will come home and he will bring his household together and he will lead them in a salah, the two rak'ah of the Salat al-Eid without the khutbah. The timing of the Salat al-Eid, we spoke about that. That is after the sun rises, the best time of that is after the sun rises, 15 minutes to 20 minutes after the sun rises. Uh, and we mentioned that it is, uh, it is uh, some scholars they recommend to delay the Salat al -Eid. Fitr, the Eid al Fitr, for the reason of that, that the people are able to give the Zakat al Fitr. And they uh, pray at the first time the Salat al Eid al Adha, so the people have enough time for their uh, Udhiya. But anyhow, the, the time starts from that time until the Zawal, until the before the Zuhr Salah. Until that time, that is in this time, between this time, has to be prayed the Salat al Eid. So, point number one, it has to be prayed after the sun rises until the Zawal. And between that timing, the Salat al-Eid has to be prayed. Point number two, you pray the Salat al-Eid without the iqama in Adhan. There is no Adhan nor iqama. Point number three, you, you read the Salah. When you read the Salah, you read it out loud. It is not like Zuhr Salah or Asr Salah. It is like a Fajr Salah. You read it loud or Maghrib Turaka or Isha Turaka. So you read them or the Jum'a Salah. You read it out loud. And then it's recommended from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to in the first rak'ah you pray uh, you recite after the Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-A'la, Sabbih ism Rabbik Al-A'la, and in the second rak'ah you recite after the Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Ghashia, and these are the two surahs that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite them in the Jum'a and in the Eidain as well. And there is one more narration that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to read Surah Al-Qamar and Surah Qaf. He will read Surah Al-Qamar and Surah Qaf, uh, uh, Surah Qaf and Surah Al-Qamar and the Surah Al-Eid as well. Uh, in the first rak'ah, before the Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, uh, there are seven takbirs, seven takbirs, including the first takbir, including the takbir of the start of the Salah, the takbir of the Tahrimah. So when you start your Salah, you say, Allahu Akbar, 
That is takbir number one. This is included with the seven takbirs. So after this, you have six more takbirs. With each takbir, you raise up your hands and you leave them down. You raise up your hands and you leave them down. So these are the seven takbirs, including the takbir at al-tahrima, the takbir at al-ihram. In the first rakah, before the salah. In the second rakah, also it is before the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, uh, five more takbirs. Other than the takbir of the intiqal, the takbir that you come up from the sujood, other than this one, you'd add more five more takbirs before you, sur you start Surah Al-Fatiha. In the accounts of the takbir, the scholars, they differ, but this is the most authentic uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I know in the Mazhab, if the brothers, some of the brothers watching in the Mazhab of Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Alayhi, there are six takbirs. Three in the first rak'ah, they are before the Surah Al-Fatiha in the first rak'ah. And in the second rak'ah, they are after the recitation, before you go to the ruku'ah. But the most authentic one is this one. And because there is a, 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 a in the takbirat, uh, uh, the, the, the Shaykh mentioned here that uh, uh, one of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I want to mention that for the, uh, 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 for the brothers, uh, so the, the Sheikh says here, فَمَنْ كَبَّرَ بَعْدَ الْقِرَاءَةِ فَقَدْ أَسَاءَ Whoever does, does the takbir after the qira'a, indeed he harmed himself. It, he is upon the opinion, and he mentioned more than one hadith. The hadith is from the uh, 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 Ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu anhu. Uh, uh, he used to say the, uh, the three takbirs. كَانَ يُكَبِّرُ فِي الْإِيدَيْنِ تِسْعًا تِسْعًا The Prophet, the, uh, uh, there is a narration from Ibn Mas'ud that he used to say three takbirs and uh, 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 that is from uh, Ibn Mas'ud so the takbirat as I said they are seven including the takbir al ihram and five in the second rakah and all the takbirs are before and this is if uh, this is if you're following the sunnah strictly this is recommended but uh, in the as i said this the takbirat and uh, the opinion of majority of the scholars other than the ahnaf it is uh, uh, sunnah so if somebody left the takbirat uh, if somebody forgot the takbirat his prayer his salah is okay nothing is wrong with uh, uh, with that the thing is, uh, uh, in the mazhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, it's wajib the takbirat. If you forgot the takbirat, you have to make the sujood uh, uh, So that is the, about the takbirat, which I will go with the opinion, with this uh, uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that seven takbirs, and with the takbirat al-ihram before the qira'a, and the five also in the second one before the qira'a. Uh, which each takbir you raise up your hands and also there is no anything to be said between the takbirat you do not make any dhikr there is no narration it doesn't establish from the prophet sallallahu alaihi any dhikr or anything when he says allahu akbar uh, you pause for a while and then you say the second takbir so in between the two takbir what do you say there is nothing uh, uh, being mentioned from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so once again very shortly uh, 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 the salat al-eid uh, to be prayed at home the father has to lead the salah or uh, one of the sons that if he's hafiz or he knows the uh, deen and he is mature he can lead the salah uh, yes uh, uh, he can do that so the family gets together uh, I will not recommend uh, that two, three family gets together in one house. I will not say that that's not recommended. So you never know uh, if La uh, Qadar Allah, may Allah does not make it happen. If something happens, that will be uh, uh, bad news. So it's better to stay in your home and not to bring anybody or not to go to anybody's house. Stay in your home and lead a salah to your family the way that you are leading the whole Ramadan, the Taraweeh and the Qiyam and all these, the prayers that you are doing at home. So do it like that. You pray two rak'ah salah after the sun rises. 15 to 20 minutes after the sunrise or 8 o'clock or 7 30 uh, like that do not delay too much it is not good so uh, uh, as uh, uh, earlier you play that is better so two rak'ah salah uh, and uh, you read in the uh, uh, first rak'ah uh, after the fatiha surat al-a'la and in the second rak'ah you read after the surat al-fatiha surat al ghashiyah and in the first rak'ah uh, with the takbir al-tahram with the takbir of the start you say including that one you say seven extra takbirs including that one you say seven extra takbirs and uh, and the second one when you come up from the ruku uh, 
uh, from the sorry when you come up from the uh, first rak'ah up before you start the surah al-fatiha you do five extra takbirs five extra takbirs and then you recite surah al-fatiha and another surah and then you go to the ruku and do the sujood and finish the salah so no khutbah no khutbah the khutbah is for the congregation the khutbah is for the imam in this case it's only that was the what anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu did and this is what the fatwa of the uh, scholars today as well uh, uh, from many countries uh, uh, saudi arabia egypt jordan all the darul iftas in these muslim countries in this muslim muslim lands uh, all of them the grand mufti of saudi arabia also all of them they give the fatwa upon this that the salat to be done without the khutbah no khutbah but after the salah if you want to listen by yourself to any lecture to anything you can do that there is nothing wrong with that but you do not do that uh, because you, everybody has to sit down on the salah and you turn on a lecture you do that as, as if it is a khutbah no you don't do that there is no khutbah and you also by yourself you do not do the khutbah although i received from some people that they, they mentioned the khutbah they send the arabic khutbah that you read this khutbah in the salat al eid there is no khutbah and the narration of anas ibn malik says that he will lead the salah without the khutbah that is the most authentic from the sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in so with this uh, uh, we'll conclude today's lecture inshallah azza wa jal uh, the question uh, remains when is the eid uh, there is a, a, a message came from one of the uh, duaat uh, 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 in the, this land uh, 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 that he uh, sent the message to the people that in Kenya, in Ethiopia, in Somalia, they sighted the moon and there is aid. But uh, some other brothers, they confirmed that with some other people over there and they said that there is no aid. So it's a kind of confused situation. We cannot announce the aid for tomorrow. So as far as we got the news from other countries and their Muslim lands, uh, the moon was not sighted there. Uh, 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 so the Eid uh, in those lands will be on Sunday. But uh, still, if there was any confirmed news, we got any con confirmed news. In that case, uh, we will announce the Eid, inshallah, and we will let you know through uh, the other means of the uh, uh, today's uh, media, uh, through the, our Facebook or through the uh, all these, uh, inshallah. So please, Jazakumullah uh, khairan, be uh, 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 try to be connected with us. So uh, we will let you know, inshallah, about the Eid exactly. Uh, but um, uh, most likely the Eid will be Sunday. Tomorrow is the Eid. That what we will, inshallah, will see that news that we got is that uh, uh, we'll talk with some other scholars, with some other mashaykh, and then uh, we'll see, inshallah. If there was an Eid tomorrow, we will send you a news, inshallah, a message, inshallah. Jazakum Allahu khayran, mubarakallahu fikum. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting, to accept our deeds, sadaqat, all the deeds that we have done in the month of Ramadan and what is left, we should not neglect that. We should not take it easy in the coming one day or one night. We should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly the way that we used to do. So uh, make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last moments of the Ramadan. Allahumma rfa' anna al-bala'a wal-waba'a wal-ghala'a. Allahumma rfa' anna al-bala'a wal-waba'a wal-ghala'a. Allahumma rfa' anna al-bala'a wal-waba'a wal-ghala'a. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء وجزاكم الله خيرا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and I will see you in شاء الله tomorrow as well بارك الله فيكم السلام